Dear Microsoft, After using Windows 11 every day for over 3 months, here's what's good and what I think could be better about Windows 11. I was wondering if you saw my video, Windows 10 more like Mac OS, because it looks very similar to Windows 11 as a lot of you have pointed out. We watched a Microsoft Live event together with an average of 5,000 people and we got really, really excited. Oh my goodness. A week later, I started using the first developer build that I also made a video about. And surprisingly, it was really stable. From that point on, I have updated to every new build that got released in the Windows Insider channel. And after that, I even built a custom PC for a friend that I think is perfect for Windows 11. Now, here is what really surprised me. The Windows 11 build 22194 was available as the Insider Preview build on the 16th of September. and was the exact same build that got released as the official Windows 11 release almost three weeks later on the 5th of October. Somehow I thought that the official release would be different from the release preview in the beta channel uh, because it felt like it wasn't really ready yet. As you said, Windows 11 was redesigned for productivity, creativity, and ease of use. And we looked at every single pixel. Down to the literal pixel. But did it live up to this? Let's find out. First, let's talk about what's new in Windows 11. I will make sure to put chapters in the timeline of the video. Hi, my name is Felix, and this is How to Creative with everything you need to create. Let's start with the look and feel. Voice over, take it away. First, a quick summary. Windows 11 is no longer available in a 32-bit version and Internet Explorer got officially removed. Design-wise, the biggest focus for Windows 11 was rounded corners, centered content and new animations. A new acrylic effect applied to several elements in the UI making it more translucent. App windows will now appear with rounded corners, the taskbar is centered and they implemented motion design all over the user interface, which in my opinion is beautiful. They created new animated icons that can be seen in the taskbar and quick settings. Dark mode is now taken seriously and new sounds are introduced for light and dark theme. Windows 11 also customized the Segu UI variable font to improve the overall scalability and sharpness of the font on different resolution displays. The transition is super smooth between desktop and tablet, from the context menus to the center taskbar. Windows 11 really improved the touch support. In my opinion, these design changes are all very welcome and beautiful, though I would love to see a more coherent dark mode since a lot of elements are still in light mode. Moreover, mostly everything is round, but the volume and brightness slider is still the old sharp corner design. This couldn't be too hard to implement before the official release, right? As previously mentioned, the icons on the taskbar are centered, which I think is the way to go. It includes start, search, task view, widgets and chat as default buttons. On the right, we have notification tray, quick settings and notification center. Let's go over these one by one. Start now has a new Windows 11 logo and it animates beautifully if you press it. Opening start now shows you a search section, a pinned app section, a recommended section and a footer with your account and quick settings. Instead of live tiles, we have pinned apps and if you press on all apps, you get a list of all your apps in an alphabetical order. It's also great that you can directly uninstall apps from this list. Now here is what could be better. Even though I love that I can pin my drives, please give us the option to group items in the pin section. Also give us the option to turn off the recommended section for more space. A grid layout instead of a vertical list of all apps would also be a great option and be more space efficient. Search is the second default item on the taskbar. This opens the search panel, although you can also open this when you start typing in start. Task view is a great feature made even better. Hovering this gives you the option to view and reorder your virtual desktops. You can reorder them from here, add a new one or close them. These virtual desktops can also have their own backgrounds, making it perfect if you use different desktops for different purposes. If you click it, you can quickly view your open windows and rearrange them. Though I'm not able to move a window from one display to another, which is a must. Also, it's great to see that you're adding a new widget panel and new widgets, but can we please have third-party widgets? I know you love Bing, but can we also get our own search engine and browser to search from the widget panel? The design is beautiful though, but I'm interested to see how many people use this on the daily. Now chat. Microsoft, please explain me this. How are you going to make Teams more personal? 
It's obvious you're replacing Skype as it is no longer a default application, but personally I think Teams, as the name says, is for teams, school or business. Personally, I like to hop on Discord to connect with friends. Talking about that, feel free to join our Discord and talk about Windows 11. I do think it's brilliant that you can add phone numbers and can use SMS to chat with people or even call them. It's very inclusive, but again, still not very personal. The notification tray didn't change much. It is still a flyout with a folder of the applications. I've noticed though that it is quite buggy on my end. The corners were still sharp and I managed to fix this by switching between dark and white theme. Though it reverts back to sharp corners when I restart my machine. The various flyouts like network, battery and the action center have been refreshed with more modern controls packed together in quick settings. You can use Windows plus A to open quick settings. The beautiful media control is also a great addition. It would be nice to be able to skip forward and backwards in a track as well. Also, volume controls for different apps could be added here. You can find this in the Xbox game bar and in the settings, which we will go through in a second. Also, some of these flyouts seem to crash sometimes and nothing happens when I click it afterwards, only if I restart my PC. A quick ID, it would be nice to have some smart device controls in here as well. Clicking on the clock opens the calendar view which shows the calendar and notifications. The animation for this is beautiful and you can collapse the calendar if you want to get more space for the notifications. You can also open this by pressing Windows plus N. Talking about the clock, can we get the option to customize it or at least get the seconds back? Furthermore, the new emoji input, on-screen keyboard and voice typing design is beautiful and super useful. You can even change your design preferences of the on-screen keyboard. This is exactly what it should have been in Windows 8. You can also activate the voice typing from here or press Windows plus H, which seems to work a lot better than I expected. This is voice typing and it works extremely well. The new emoji panel is also great and you can even get GIFs from there. You can easily open this by pressing Windows plus dot. Continuing with the new settings page. The first thing that really stood out to me when I first started using the developer build. Beautiful, simplistic and inclusive. I haven't needed to open the control panel a single time, which is a good thing, because it's also still light mode. Let's go over the most important changes. In the system tab, we first have display. First, you see your connected displays. You can rearrange them how you want, however, you cannot change the size of every display. Meaning you can only position your monitors but the mouse will not properly position if your second screen is larger but has fewer pixels. It would be nice to scale the displays even though they have fewer pixels. I would also like to see better scaling because right now using two different monitor resolutions is a challenge. The rescaling between two different resolution monitors can create blurry results in UI and text. Interesting, since they did focus on the external display part. They did add a new feature for laptop users that work with an external monitor very often. You can enable the setting which will remember the window locations for your connected display. What I do really like is that your display can activate HDR if your monitor supports it and automatically turn it on for games. When I first started using the developer build for Windows 11, I immediately noticed a difference and it is amazing. For the sound panel, we can easily manage sound devices. A volume mixer all the way at the bottom, which I think should be a more prominent feature also added to the quick settings, as previously mentioned. Notifications makes it super simple to turn notifications from different apps on or off. From here, you can also change the focus assist settings, which I have been using and really like. Power options also make it easier to turn your PC to best performance. Most of the other categories are very straightforward and coherent. The personalization is the most exciting in my opinion. This really lets you customize the look and feel of your desktop. You can select different default themes in Windows. They included very beautiful new wallpapers and by right clicking on a wallpaper you can set it for your preferred display. So now here comes my point. Why are these wallpapers compressed by default? I have a 4K monitor and can clearly see the wallpaper compression on the default wallpapers. I don't get it. Also, it would be nice to see some dynamic or animated wallpapers. It's not like the compatible devices for Windows 11 aren't strong enough. In colors, you can select between a light or dark mode. 
I really love dark mode, but it still feels very inconsistent. The task manager, control panel, device manager, notepad, pane, just to name a few, are all still way too bright. Come on Microsoft, this should have been done with the first release if you really looked at every single pixel. You can also turn the transparency effect on or off from here and select your accent color. It seems you can select pure black as your custom accent color, which is nice. Now themes. You can see here which wallpaper, color, sounds and mouse cursor you have applied. And this is what I got really excited about. With the first release, I saw they changed the mouse icon. I expected a new cursor design at launch. I felt like the cursor was a bit outdated after 25 years or so of the same design. Well, they didn't. So I created my own. I saw this design and I got excited. Although I wanted to take it one step further. I asked myself the question, what if I could create the perfect cursor for Windows 11? The perfect cursor for Windows 11 should be round cornered, centered and animated. And that's what I did. The macOS cursor pack got downloaded over 12,000 times on my website, so I saw an opportunity. It took me a lot of time to design the different styles in Illustrator, animate it in 60 frames per second using After Effects, export every single frame and creating high resolution versions of every single frame in the cursor editing program so it is sharp on every pixel display, even 4K. I like the fact that it is centered and if you are a gamer, you will understand what I mean. Every cursor design is symmetrical and centered, providing improved accuracy and ease of use. The cursor pack has a light and dark version and has one-click installers. Some friends and I have been using the cursor pack for a week or so and we have been loving it. I think you will love it too. You can get the animated cursor pack on my website in exchange for a cup of coffee or by becoming a Patreon. Also, by getting this first version of the pack, you will get access to all the future updates of this pack. Now back to it. You can choose this mouse cursor pack by clicking on the mouse cursor, go to the pointer tab and select the black or white theme from the drop down menu. Continuing on, the lock screen, you can choose between Windows Spotlight, Picture and Slideshow. I like to use Spotlight, I also choose Mail as my lock screen status, but why is it not supported on my external monitor? Would love to see Spotlight on my second monitor as well. Also, not all images are high resolution in Spotlight. And for the screensaver, don't you think it's time to update this? I mean, look at it. Next, a lot of different beautiful designs for the on-screen keyboard. Start options, as previously mentioned, please give us folders. And taskbar, where you can enable or disable default options like search, task view, widgets and chat. Like I said before, I like to turn off search as I use the start button for this. Also, as previously mentioned, please let us change the size, position and background of the taskbar. If you want your taskbar back on the left side, you can also do that from here. You now also have a nice fonts tab, where you can install and view your installed fonts. Kind of like Fontbook on macOS. In the apps category, you can view and uninstall your apps and you can set your default apps to open certain file types. This is awesome. I'm not going into detail for the other pages since a lot of it is straightforward. So I would say go look for yourself. Lastly, on the bottom we have a Windows update category and this easily visualizes if you're up to date or can update to a new version of Windows. Now, snap layouts and snap groups. Hovering over the maximize button will now show a menu of different sizing options for the window depending on your screen size. This makes it even better for ultra wide screens since you can get three windows in a row. In portrait mode, moving a window to the left and right side will snap applications to the top and bottom of the screen. Dragging a window to snap will show the new size in an acrylic style preview. In my opinion, this was already one of the best features of Windows and macOS could really learn from this. Windows 11 improved it even further by introducing snap groups. This lets you open and close several windows at the same time. It does not seem to work yet for every third-party application though. Context menus are all looking beautiful. It does seem to glitch a bit still, but the acrylic effect might be the most logical here. The new icons and design really make it look beautiful. They also made the context menu in File Explorer a bit smaller for mouse users and a bit larger for touch users. I've noticed a lot of people are still talking about the show more option as it takes more clicks to get to additional features. But Microsoft has explained that the show more options loads the Windows 10 context menu as is for access to low use shell verbs and apps that are still working on porting over. 
So we just have to wait for the developers to update their apps, I guess. Fell Explorer finally has a dark theme. The redesigned icons look amazing. The updated context menus also look amazing here, but the most important thing, can we please get tabs in Fell Explorer? That would be great. Some users have also reported a decrease in speed for the Fell Explorer, although I haven't noticed this myself. Let's talk about some updated apps now. First, Paint, which didn't get a dark mode yet. They say it is under development, which we are really looking forward to. Next, the snipping tool. This works fantastic. The screenshotting with Windows plus Shift plus S also has an updated design. The calculator, which now also comes with a lot of extra features. The clock app, which now also includes focus sessions. An improved photos app. Also, Windows Terminal is now the default app, which is great. And Skype has now been removed as a default app. And Notepad and Word are now default programs to open text files instead of WordPad. It would be nice to see dark mode for Notepad. Check out Notepads from the Microsoft Store to see what Notepad could be. All these apps are now updated via the new Microsoft Store. Talking about that, the Microsoft Store has been completely redesigned. What used to be a big frustration point now seems to be improved by a lot. New layouts, design and animated UI. Some good stuff. However, it would be nice if we can also uninstall the apps directly from the Microsoft Store. That's about it for Windows 11. If you want to learn every single feature of Windows 11, go to changewindows.org or read the Windows Insider blogs. If you aren't using Windows 11 yet, I hope you got a better idea if you want to install it now or wait a bit. And if you're using Windows 11 already, comment below what you like and think could be better about Windows 11. And Microsoft, if you're watching, we are looking forward to seeing these things being improved and or implemented. Uh, one last question. Why did you rush the release of Windows 11? You could have waited till the 11th of November just for fun. Even though Windows 11 was incredibly stable in the first developer build, I felt like the official release was a bit underwhelming and unfinished. Nevertheless, I have been loving Windows 11 and really feel it is a great step in the right direction, uh, but there is so much more to be done. We have high expectations, make it great. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like on your way out, stay creative and see you soon.